as well. Hello, Rhett. How's it going? Are we planning world creation? Yes, we are. Um, we've gone over what I'm going to be researching. Don't know if you can read all of this at the moment. It's kind of wibbly wobbly, scribblies everywhere. Um, but I've decided on avenues of research, um, the things that we're going to be kind of looking at over the next month and, uh, and kind of building this up along the way as we go. Is my name Bob? No, my name's not Bob. Um, B.O.B. is the Bust Out Broadcast, something that I've been doing every single Sunday. It's outside of gaming. It's basically every uh, each Sunday I've, I've done uh, an hour broadcast and gaming talk shows where I do something that's not exactly gaming, um, technology, like anything. Um, and I've decided to use, use my Bust Out Broadcasts um as the uh, as the time that we come together to do our brainstorming so for the foreseeable future um bob or bust out broadcast is going to be about this world creation um underwater cave thing here's here's the plot said race of humans train a group of people every generation to go to the surface i love it runty i love it i need to like i need a pen and paper so i can actually like write things down i hate typing i really hate typing although i guess i could like boop, get into the whole typing thing as well uh we'll start this in word so we'll start jotting things down so that we know what's what where's what how's what and uh and and kind of get this started so um Let's go ideas. Day one. Cool. Fantastic. We'll bold that up and we will make it like 24 point. Yes. Alrighty. Um, I want <laughs> that back to 12 point. I don't want it bold. Alrighty. Um, so as far as things like the world goes, um, so this is the world as a whole or the planet so this is what we're currently going to be looking at is the world as a whole we're not going to get into finer details we're going to make a big murky ball of muck and start molding it into something that is actually out there um, so things like uh, real world settings um, i.e. we're going to be looking at things like, what did I say, grand, oh my gosh, learn to type guy, Grand Canyon, um, Sahara Desert, oh my gosh, come on, there's an A in there somewhere, uh, Amazon, and also high fantasy settings as well. I'm going to call these high fantasy settings because high fantasy, in my opinion, are things that are more outlandish. You can have a fantasy setting that is very much like the Sahara Desert, like the Amazon and things like that. Um, but a high fantasy setting, um, we're looking at more sort of uh, alien architecture. Um, I don't know. I, I know we're not going to be looking at realms so much later on. Later. Later. But still something to consider um, as we kind of push forth. Look at Game of Thrones for the world. Yes. Um, I'm not going to put that in high fantasy because that's not high fantasy. Um, but with list things like Warcraft... Um, Discworld is definitely high fantasy. Discworld is probably one of the most high fantasy things that I can probably think of right now at this point of th in time. Um, Lord of the Rings. Okay, that'll do us there. Um, and we've got... What do we got? Do, do, do. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Um, and yes, um, I'm not, we, let's, let's 
let's put this like put this down right now. We're not we're not going to go into um, creatures and like massive or- amounts of organic matter, shall we say? We're not going to go into creatures, races, um, people, stories. We're not not going to look at that right now. What we're going to look at is um, is the world and the environment, the um, the setting for the world, um, continents, possible uh, locations within the world, and um, and you know uh, just the the overall design of this world. And then once we've done that, we can use that to say, hey, okay, let's move on to uh, to races. What kind of races? can live in these different environments in this world how many worlds are there going to be there's going to be one okay we're gonna we're gonna put this down right now um let's just go no uh the world as a whole which is going to be single I'll i'll put it like this this works single is that is that how you spell single planet Single planet, single world, single planet. That's where we're going to start, guys. That's where we're going to start. We're going to start with a single planet, and we're going to take our big ball of clay, and we're going to mold it into something, and then we're going to look at any external factors that will need to be included. But at this stage, one planet, one world, one setting, one of everything. And we will put that together. Um, and the environments as well. Um, so, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to, to do this without including things like weather. <laughs> I don't want to get into weather. Weather's a horrible thing to get into right now. Why not start with the planet? How many stars does it have? How long are days? How many moons? Yes. Tricky. Um, planet cycle. Thank you very much, Mr. Tricky. Uh, how many stars? How long are days? How many moons is it surrounded by other planets? Very good point, my friend. Very good point. That is definitely something that we want to consider and we want to get into is knowing the, the the local solar system as well we don't need to go and create all of those worlds at this stage um, but knowing our day night cycle would definitely be something that is uh, probably something I want to want to get into as well when we jump on Skype uh, or steam for voice we can we can definitely jump on and do and do a discussion right now if that if that's what you guys are keen to do. I mean, I was going to I was going to kind of end this, come back after a break and do some gaming and then get into the research stuff tonight. But if you guys are keen, I am more than keen to get this show on the road. It would be counterproductive because of people talking while others. Still <laughs> I like typing much better than talking. You better like talking as well, because I want you in on stream at some point to just. Dis- it does have lag, but that's okay. It's not. It's not a massive amount of lag. Like I think my stream's currently running at about ten or fifteen seconds um, delay, so it's not a massive amount of delay. So that's all. All good. That's all good. Um, I think was it uh, Runty? Who asked about multiple suns or anything as well? Can I scroll up and find out? Can somebody tell me multiple suns? Another yes. Okay, it was Runty. Um, planet cycle. So um, suns. <laughs> we'll just we'll list it as just suns for now. Uh, what am I doing? Apparently, I I am having. so many problems typing right now 
so many, so many problems typing right now. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely want you guys um, to jump on on uh, on Skype with me now and then. I want some people to um, brainstorm with um, on stream as well from time to time. So uh, you're more than welcome. If you've got ideas, if you want to talk to me about coming onto stream and discussing ideas over the uh, over the course of one of my bust out broadcasts, then uh, more than happy to discuss that and we can kind of do some brainstorming that way as well because uh to be honest doing all the talking myself is definitely taking its toll <sighs> skype sounds wonderful it does it does sound wonderful you're logged into steam Star equal sun, planet equal rock, <laughs> or blow a gas surrounding sun star. <laughs> yes. 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 We are not going to get into the finer parts of astronomy. <laughs> um, as, as far as I'm concerned, so long as we can say this is the day-night cycle, um, and we can, uh, we can start building a world and then build sort of put in ideas for a local solar system along the way then they're more than happy and i really like the idea I, I would like to have it in there um so that we have a really good idea of uh of the the cycles of night and day and and possibly even twilight times um and lunar occurrences and things like that but that will that will come along the way um i think it's more important to uh, make sure that we have a really solid world to to uh to build things on and we have a good idea of what's around that planet not necessarily you know this planet which is made of this and blah 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 and all that kind of stuff we'll get to that just not going to be a massive point at this stage we will get to it uh how many consonants yes continents okay uh continents 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 um and we want to know like you said like how many continents are we going to do are we going to look at one two three i kind of want like uh, I would love to have some major continents, um, some outlying uh, islands, some archipelagos. Uh, I want I want to incorporate all kinds of things, um, and I I would really like to have a um, semi semi realistic. Like obviously, like without <laughs> without having the knowledge of what makes the world tick and why. Uh, why land masses are all in the in the places that they're in um of course good knowledge of it not great it's kind of hard to make it fully realistic but i would like to have a nice rounded world that has everything on it or or we could have you know a uh a, an isosceles trapezoid as, as our world that could be the shape of our world you know we could have one of those that's a tough one because continent formation is totally random if there are no divine deities involved. Yes, this is definitely, definitely true. Um, as far as continents um, go and how they move and shift and putting them into their place, I think it's okay to for us to come up with the um, continents and the way that we want them to be. Um, and then we can look at coming up with an explanation later on for why they are like that um and uh and not really not really going to build a massive massive history on uh, on how the world was formed from beginning to end because that would be a lot more work than uh, than what we're actually putting in that would that wouldn't be a year creating this world that would be a long long time to uh to get all of those details down 
Uh, was each one going to be a different climate region, or were they all going to be very diverse? Guessing we should focus on one for now. Each one might have a different lunar or day cycle because of its position. Yes, definitely, definitely. And that's something that I want to, I, I do want to consider is, you know, if, if this continent's here and this continent's on the other side of the world, then obviously our day and night cycle is going to affect that. Um, and they're going to have different seasons and things as well. A mechanic in the game, continent formation. <laughs> yeah, we, should, we, should we make the game? We will make the game about forming the world. We'll give you the continents and, and the basic land mass, and then you can form it for us, and then we'll take that and we'll use that. <laughs> That'll be the game. We'll give you all the special powers to be able to move things around. <laughs> the game is made around the world, not the world around the game. Yeah, I, I think I think we'll we'll stick to creating our world and then doing a game around that later on in, uh, in time. Core continents movement is measured in eons. Yes. Yes. Um, so as far as continent goes, okay. So we've ruled out um, that we want to have a go over the period of, of continent shift. So uh, not, not looking at uh, co continental drift. Okay, we're not going to look at continental drift. Um, it's going to be uh, land masses um, already in place. Lore on continent formation later. So we'll, we'll say that, okay? We're going to say we're not going to look at anything like continental drift or anything. Um, we're going to look at the land masses in place how we want them. And then we will look at the lore um, or, uh, or history. Lore, history on continent formation later. That can be something that we can deal with later on. Because for us to build the history of a planet's formation and landmass formation um, and evolution of life on the world, like you're you're talking about a project that is beyond the scope of what anyone has really done. And as much fun as that would be, I think I'd be working on it for the rest of my life. Um, and we wouldn't really be getting very very far each uh, each week we would be constantly in debate discussing and researching aspects about why a planet has shifted 24 degrees to the south over the course of 400,000 years or whatever be much colder and wouldn't have a ton of leafy plants if one has lots of night, it would be much cooler. Yes. Yes. Are they going to be oceans? So, water mass. Um, okay, we'll say, we'll say land mass versus water mass. Um, Kilgore, fantastic. Uh, I'm just going to put, are there going to be oceans? <laughs> are there going to be any oceans? Um, yes. Yes, we will definitely have ocean. Because I think that's probably an extremely diverse environment that we can do a lot with. And uh, also, you can't have life without water. So, kind of need to have that somewhere along the line um so we have to work out uh i think if we if we kind of base it on the the same kind of system as earth also that kind of brings me back to uh the actual world as well so um the size 
um, of the planet as well. Are we going to have a planet that's the same size as Earth, which is really, really tiny, really, really tiny, or are we going to have something that's more along, say, Jupiter, where it's sort of a lot, lot bigger, a lot bigger than Earth. Um, but that also affects other things, like gravity forces and stuff as well. Um, maybe consider effects effects, affects, effects uh, on gravity, which would definitely change what the formation of land masses are like. You're not going to get trees that are sprouting miles into the air uh, if the gravity is a lot more than Earth's. What color is the sun? <laughs> what color is the sun? Um... I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, pinky orange yellow. That's what I'm gonna go with. Pinky orange yellow rings around the planet. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna. Sp Whoa, that was that was actually pretty intense. You guys are throwing out a lot of questions. I have to say right now, you guys are throwing out lots of questions. It's it's awesome, but I can't come up with all of the answers. <laughs> Got a brainstorm here with me. Chuck me a question and then theorize something. Give me, give me more than questions. I want more. Heavier star equal more gravitational force. Exactly. Exactly. And we will get into that at some stage. Thank you, Kilgore. Thank you. If you use physics of our space-time, continuum blue and purple suns are a lot heavier than yellow suns. Awesome. That is not something that I'm currently considering. <laughs> the weight of the sun. Um, color. Density. Size. Fun stuff. Lots of fun stuff. More gravitational force increases the speed a planet will spin around a star. We can, we can look into the like loose mechanics on that. I'm not going to look at absolute precise physics on it. Um, I would like to say something like, you know, the, it has a single sun. Um, it's a planet uh, around the same size as maybe Mars or something bigger. I don't know. Uh, and uh, due to, you know, we can look at the day-night cycle as being um, probably around about maybe 20 hours as opposed to 24 hours because, the, uh, because it orbits at a, at a faster speed around a more dense sun due to the size. I don't know, but uh, that's just something that I want, I, I want to put out there as how much detail I want to put into this. I don't want to go at its velocity and gra and ab absolute mass and precise gravitational force. Way too much math. Way too much math. Believable, but not scientific, okay? That's what we're going for. <clears throat> Dun, 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 dun. Bit of child of light music. Love it. Yeah, like you're saying, like, you know, a shorter shorter year, shorter day span because um, because of the density it's gonna spin around a lot quicker. I have a thought, one of my stories I uh, created a planet in orbits. Oh it's a much bigger sun. Twin Sun Planet has a very small moon planet in the sun so I cast permanent shadow on a certain area of the planet that's interesting can you have that I suppose if the moon is orbiting the planet and the planet is spinning in the same direction that the moon is turning or orbiting while it's spinning around the sun then you could theoretically have a solar spot keeping that place dark that's an that's an awesome awesome idea i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put that down because that's your story that's something that you've already done and i 
I don't want to go and, and put down <laughs> an idea that somebody has already uh, put in motion, so to speak. Our logical analysis of this question is too pristine. Notice me. <laughs> yes, yes, we are we are we are having a lot of a logical analysis about this. Um So like I said, I want something that is semi believable, but not purely scientific. Not scientific in its in its uh in its conclusion. If somebody gets out their ruler and pen and compass, they're going to find out that the math is completely off for this. But that's okay, because we just want it to be something that is, you know, semi-believable. <clears throat> Moon doesn't work because the gravity of the planet and sun keep it in place. Yeah, but while the planet is orbiting, it has to have its own rotational force, otherwise you would just have one side dark, one side, uh, you'd, ha you'd, you'd have a, a shift, a shift of light, but it wouldn't be, it, it'd be offset by how it spins around as opposed to its rotation. So it'd be a, a yearly cycle of sun around the planet as opposed to a daily cycle. Theoretically possible to have a permanent half shadow being cast on your planet. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. But you would you would not have if you had a half shadow caused by the sun, then um you would have no day night cycle. You would only have a yearly cycle. Hello, baby girl need daddy. Welcome to the channel. How's it going? <laughs> it's not published, not finished, not published. All right, I'll write this down. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm writing this down as, as DJ. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll write down. There we go. I should be just writing that down. Um, so, oh, um. I, I want to quote this stuff so that I kind of get it right. Right, I've got that down, so I, I know I know what you mean by having like that permanent shadow across it and stuff, um, which would be awesome. I think I think that'd be really really uh, really really unique to have an area that is always cast in lunar light or something. Um, more than one moon, it would really mess with tides and ocean flow. Yes, yes, it would. I think. I think we need to stick to what we know in reality. Like if we if we said two suns, then obviously it's going to make it a lot hotter. And if the suns orbit at the same time um, around, if if the planet orbits both suns in alignment, then it would cast um, a lot more heat. It would be a lot more heat on that side facing the sun than a single sun would. If the suns alter, alternate, um, have alternate orbits, then, like, say, you know, we have one large sun, one smaller sun that orbits that while the planet orbits. So you've got the planet going this way around the main big sun and the smaller sun inside going the opposite direction. You would have 
some really interesting conflict where you have days that are ridiculously hot and long versus days that are a lot shorter. But I digress. I think we'll stick to one sun um, and potentially one moon as well because like you say, if we get into two moons, uh, we may end up with a very unbelievable setting as far as tides and alignments and everything go. Unusual properties due to planet alignment. Yes. Um, who said, <laughs> did, did I say unusual properties due to planet alignment? Well, we're going to put that down. And we can come back onto this later on. Um, due to planet alignment. Is it going to be more post-apocalyptic or more vibrant and lush? Kilgore, we're going to go with more vibrant and lush for the most um, of it. Uh, when we say apocalyptic or post-apocalyptic or um, something to that effect, we are taking into account um, creatures or beings that have uh, been involved, that have caused this to happen or events have taken place, i.e., um, global warming, possibly, destroying things, heating things up, volcanoes erupting, all that kind of stuff, turning it towards more post-apocalyptic. Um, there are still natural things that could occur, things like ice ages um, and uh, major disturbances like meteor crashes or huge volcanic eruptions. We know that uh, for a fact on Earth, um, way, way back in the early days before there was life on the planet, um, in order to create the continents, there had to be um, magma activity and volcanic eruptions um, that were so vast, so immense that they um, created huge volumes of of uh, of landmass, and uh, and there's lots of there's lots of solid fact um, about that uh, that part of the history of of Earth in particular, um, but that's in the creation of the world where there are still things um, evolving, developing, and post-apocalyptic is leaning more towards um, what has happened in the aftermath of, say, human intervention or something like that. <sighs> yeah, definitely, we, we can definitely look at, at apocalyptic scenarios later on down the track for law building would be really, really interesting because I do like some of that stuff, um, but it's not going to be the world that we create. Um, it will be what we do to the world after we've created it. Um, we should probably look at, I mean, as far as continent goes, um, yeah, I would like to get, um, a good idea of land masses at some stage. We don't have to get into this all right now. This can be something that we get into kind of later on, uh, down the track once we've done a bit more research. Um, but it is, it is something that I want to, uh, to look at. Um, I will put in here as well um, research material and we're going to be looking at um, the Silmarillion. I think that's how you spell it. Let's put a capital S on there because that's fancy y'all. Um, looking behind me Discworld for our high fantasy kind of stuff. Uh, MTG if you guys have done any of looked at any of the lore or magic the gathering it is actually amazing uh, Warcraft the inheritance cycle great I can spell it's good to know it's good to go good to know Morrowind with Red Mountain yes I love Morrowind absolutely love Morrowind and Red Mountain. Um, obviously that 
the the world of Morrowind was kind of created. The Elder Scrolls, all the Elder Scrolls games are set in the same world. So we're gonna we'll we'll put down Elder Scrolls um, because that is an awesome series of games. They're all set within the same world, um, and they have some amazing amazing environments and landscapes. So definitely something I want to look at. But they've created the Elder Scrolls kind of on the fly, and they've kind of um, in portion kind of with especially in regards to things like DLC, just kind of built things into it and gone. Okay, we want to do um, you know this this city or something like that. We'll just build it into the game as DLC, and we'll put it here and map it out as we go along and they've kind of done that they've got a map a loose map that they worked off however um if you've actually looked at how they've built the land masses in their games it doesn't really tie in to their overall map very well so it's a bit more rough as far as the outer scrolls go um if i'm talking about worlds and their development you cannot ignore narnia yes that's probably a good point um we will look at Narnia and Lion the Witch and the Wardrobe. Um definitely again another high fantasy setting that um is really really cool. I think though Narnia is definitely put together a lot better than some of the other high fantasy ones that we're looking at um warcraft was really really badly done up until recent years it was kind of hashed all together and uh and lots of things land masses and stuff didn't really make sense and they've kind of put them into perspective with world of warcraft and world of warcraft has become the new map of the warcraft universe of azeroth um however those land masses were different back in the day of uh, of say the dark portal um and uh, and warcraft one as well requiem in the background yeah i've got the osts running today got what is game of thrones um yes Game of Thrones is set in a fantasy world. It is it is it is really well done, but they're still kind of writing it. I don't know whether I want to look at that for world creation or whether I want to look at that in terms of of lore and uh, and races and things because it has um, a really really good outlook on things like uh, like magic. Um, I like the way that Game of Thrones does that. Magic is not something that is uh, prevalent within the world. It is something very special and unique to certain people and individuals. Um, and it's a very gritty uh, world. But that's because of the lore, not because of the world itself. The world itself is, uh, is very kind of stock standard. And there's not a really big great deal um, other than two partial continents that have been kind of talked about um there's not really a massive world map so to speak for that but we will look at that um later on down the track um what else do i have i've got oops greek mythology i think greek mythology as far as world building goes um there's a really really quite a lot of unique land masses that are depicted within greek mythology so we'll look at that at some stage but i think i'll just keep that as is like that um for research material and everything uh, i've we've filled a page we've filled a page for ideas for day one <laughs> sort of sort of um and definitely uh i think world setting and theme may end up actually coming a bit later once we've kind of got the logistical astrological aspects out of the way so we'll focus on that and we'll decide on our our moon our sea our land uh our sun and uh, and kind of go from there aboriginal north american stories for law yes yes when we get to that point when we get to that point i want you guys to hit me with this kind of stuff 
Um, I don't want to be focus. I, I don't want to focus on it too much at the moment. I, uh, I would like for us to get a really good starting point, um, and I think we've got a really good starting point. This raises a lot of questions that I haven't really thought about. Um, considering things like the day-night cycle, um, land masses that are going to be either cast in shadow, um, how they're going to work with uh, with going around a sun, the, and, uh, and and how long that will take, year, and all that kind of stuff, so that we know what our planet is going to be, and uh, and map out kind of the size of the planet as well. Oh my god, 30 second ad. Sorry, sorry Kilgore. Cannot do anything about ads. Once once I can actually uh, control ads, I will, and you will not see ads while I'm actively streaming. If I take breaks, then I'll run ads, but that'll be about it. Phone died. Gutted. Gutted. Absolutely. Gutted. Cool. So I think I think that's a really good start. I think that's really. Uh, should we name the world? There is definitely a consideration for uh, for naming the world at this stage. Oops. Um, but we are going to go and simply, I think, have um, a project name for now. So if you guys want to brainstorm like a project name, and then we will go with actual names for a world once we have uh, have uh, kind of built the structure for it not sure if this is a necessary research source the name can wait yeah the name can wait um we will definitely have a project for this i don't know what do you guys what do you guys reckon project lighthouse <laughs> take my suggestion for research material once more What suggestion, DJ? I'll cross out that one because that's not DJ. That's Runty. Project Cactus. The Kalvala. What is... Let's have a look. What is Kal the Kalvala? Tales of Magic and Adventure. Finish. Oh, yep. 19th century work, epic poetry compiled by ah, folklore and mythology. Is that what uh, is that what we're looking at? Looking at. Alrighty. Um, the Kalvala. Oh, I will definitely look into that. I will definitely look into that. Norse mythology as well. The Vikings, definitely a point of interest for me. Um, however, definitely a lore uh, subject there as it is already grounded, uh, very much grounded in, uh, in the real world, whereas Greek mythology is not so grounded in the real world. It, uh, it has its own... Uh, own continents and areas unto itself really project trapezoid hello time lord welcome back welcome back um oops so I'll, I'll look at I'll I'll potentially look at things like Norse mythology uh, later on down the track, but uh, I think I think as far as research materials for now goes, I think this is really really good. If you guys have suggestions, again, uh, email to nearlight at gmail .com. It's down below. If you forget it, it's really easy. It's the name of my channel. Um, do not send me messages on Twitch. I would really really beg of you do not do that. I don't check it all that often. I do not get any notifications when I get a message through Twitch. Um, so if if you message me through Twitch, it may be uh, a few days before I actually remember to check there. It's a real world. 
It is. Greek mythology has got a lot of solid materials, and Norse mythology is usually divided in many elements you can travel to. Yes. Yes. They could be symbolic of different continents. This is this is definitely true. Um, I'll I'll put it in there. Okay. Um, I'm not saying that that is something that I am going to really look into. Not at this point because I know that Norse mytho mythology. Um, you know, you've got you've got Valhalla and stuff, and but it's it's for the most part um, rooted in in real world locations as opposed to Greek mythology which is uh, like like you said DJ it's got a lot of solid material and in, in the form of uh, unique landscapes land masses continents and and places um, I think that's that's probably I don't know have you guys got any other suggestions here on what we need to consider um, in this, we need to consider the name of the world at some point. At some point, we need a we need a name for the project as well, so that we can have awesome code name for our project. Uh, Lovecraft's dream quest of unknown Kadath. Lovecraft created his very own world in that story. Yes, Lovecraft is definitely. Definitely cool. I like Lovecraft. Uh, I'll chuck this up here somewhere. There you go. We'll chuck. <laughs> we'll just chuck Lovecraft over there by himself for a little bit, and uh, and we'll we'll can definitely consider that as well. Aboriginal mythology has some solid truth to it. Project Stream World. <laughs> Nice, Jackie. Cactus, wait. <laughs> what genre? Um, you mean you mean sort of like the theme or setting, Zeph? Like as in like you know, uh, gothic fantasy sci-fi that kind of stuff. Uh, it's probably going to be sort of starting, uh, in uh, loose fantasy, is is kind of what I'm going to phrase it as at the moment. We will develop it from there. Um, but I, I, I want to add in elements of, um, of sci-fi as well. I really love um, gothic styling of, uh, of games like the original Diablo series. So amazing. And um, I, w I would like to incorporate ideas from, from things like that as well. But that's not going to have too much bearing on the world that we create to begin with. Summarize again. What's the story? We're not really doing. The, <laughs> we're not really doing the story. Yeah, I think I think DJ's got it covered. World creation. We're we're creating a world. We're going to spend the next month researching. Every Sunday, I'm going to come back and we're going to do a bit more brainstorming on this and come up with different ideas um, for this world that we're creating. And then we're going to. Once we once we get uh, into the sort of meat and veg of it all, we will build the continents, the land masses, the oceans, all that kind of stuff. And uh, by the end of the year, I would like to have a world map designed so that we have uh, have the world as we uh, as we have envisioned and created it at the end of the year as something uh, drawn up and uh, on a nice pretty map and stuff and then we can go into lore aspects and stories and and really delving into uh, into how this world is going to come to life alrighty um, anything else before we uh, kind of wrap wrap today's session up I think um, like I said, you know, uh, we will get onto the name eventually. We'll have a project name to begin with. Um, I want to look at the continents and we're going to look at them as they are, how we want them to be. And we will worry about how they formed, uh, later on, uh, environments. I want to know what kind of environments do you guys want to, uh, to kind of see in this. We've got real world environments, high fantasy environments, alien environments, um, and if you have, uh, ideas for a, a really nice, 
a uh, really nice setting for an area or environment, I'd really like to hear it. Uh, the name Parallax or Insidious sounds badass. It does. It does. What if the world is held up by a titan or something? You mean, you mean like Discworld where it's on the back of a giant turtle and there's just turtles all the way down. What's holding up the turtle? Another turtle. It's just turtles all the way down. I think a project name is important. I think it is as well. We will, we will figure that out. We will figure it out. By, <laughs> I'd rather be spelled in space by gravitational forces. Cannot be exhausted. <laughs> definitely, definitely. We don't, we don't want turtles all the way down, okay? We don't want turtles all the way down. Um, and again, rounds, planes, we're going to stick to the single planet for now, we're not going to look into that. Um, we're going to look at the world as a whole, or the planet, and its local solar system. The local solar system will be very loosely based in something that is semi-believable. We're not going to make it very scientific. Um, and I have a whole ton of research material to go over, like a whole ton of it. So I'm going to be extremely 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 busy <laughs> DJ scientific analysis <laughs> uh, we're gonna we're gonna get the uh, the level headedness of of DJ's interpretation of our high fantasy settings at some point guaranteed. Can't, it can't be Titans, it's got to be Gravitational Force. No, I, I, I think we should make this much more sort of a believable world to begin with and then introduce more fantasy aspects to it as time goes on. Uh, should have is a dark side and a good side. That reminds me, I don't know if you guys, this is definitely um, something that I want to look into. Um, and I don't know if you guys have read... Damn it, this at all. Um, the Half Men of O. The Half Men of O is a fantastic story. Uh, if you have not read it, I urge you go out, get a copy, read it. It is quite gritty, quite dark, uh, and quite humorous as well. Uh, really, really cool books. And that is definitely something that I want to look into because uh, it's based in the real world um, with a portal to another realm or another world which uh, is altogether completely different and these worlds are, are intertwined and, uh, and can semi sort of interact with one another which is really, really, really cool. Project insert name here. I love it, Jerky. Keep at it, man. Keep at it. Um, I think... I think I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm good. I think I have a massive amount uh, to go off to begin with, um, which is great, guys. Thank you, thank you all very much for your input. This has been really productive and really, really fun, um, and we do have a lot of stuff that we can actually go over. Um, make sure you keep thinking about it. We will have a project name one day soon. I'm gonna save this before uh, I. Uh, accidentally delete it or anything we'll just chuck it onto uh, uh, the desktop day one fantastic shouldn't be barging in tell you what to do but I think the world should look like inhuman what what is inhuman you mean like the world should look vastly different to what it looks like with human population or like to this world or 
like very alien or do you mean it in some other way like as inhuman a reference to something i i am all ears time lord i am all ears honestly i if you are new to the channel and you've got a, an idea hit me with it because i won't say that uh I, I won't say no to any ideas from from anyone um i want to hear what people have to say <clears throat> Send out a copy of list of this research material. I'm going to be involved anyway. Really like to research as well. Yep, definitely, definitely. Um, I will make this all available on Dropbox, guys. I I will jot down this stuff, um, and after the streams over every Sunday, um, I will upload it to Dropbox, and link will go down below in the info for uh, for people that want to have a look over. Um, what we've come up with if they don't want to go back and and listen to uh, what has now been over two hours of broadcasting project create sukuru create in japanese <laughs> fair enough although i'm not exactly japanese um i wonder what bear with me here uh i don't know what the moldy word for create is uh search poa po pohiwa imagine fancy fantasize conjure up i don't know i don't know if that works search create or make for me that's that's much more much more along the lines since i'm a kiwi poewa seems fitting it, it it does have a uh a nice whoops that's not the window that i wanted to pop up that's the window Uh, as a verb, is mistaken or confused. As a noun, a receptacle for cooked food, a food basket. Um, you have to remember, <laughs> multi words generally have different meanings. The same word can have multiple meanings. Uh... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe imagine. It's got a ring to it. Yeah. Yeah. You like you like that? We we can have that. I I don't mind about that. It's just uh they they do tend to have different meanings. We can we can run with that for now, okay? We can run with that for now. Fantastic. All right, guys. I think we'll end it on that. We have a name, Project Pohewa, and we will uh, we will come back to this next week. I will save copies of this, put them on Dropbox, and make sure that links are available each week uh, for people if they want to have a look at it i will uh i'll try to highlight this although it is extremely long so <laughs> i may only put the uh the first half of it actually on uh, on on youtube or i might split it split it up a little bit as well project valid project name fantastic fantastic Yeah, sorry, Time Lord. Unfortunately, can't have uh, can't have links because people link to all kinds of obscene materials when they come into the channel for the first time and want to troll. So we have a bit of a block on it until you are a trusted member of the channel, um, and uh, and my moderators moderators will make sure that you are um, able to uh, to post links when uh, when we know they're not going to be offensive in, in nature at all um 
<laughs> I I definitely definitely have enough research material. I don't want I don't want any more research material at this stage. I am going to have a hard time mulling my way through all of this. So we <laughs> we will definitely see how it goes in the long run. But um, definitely definitely love it. Definitely love it. Thank you all for your contributions at the moment. If I have missed uh, some contributions, don't think that is because I don't like them. Uh, probably because I've just been on a bit of a prattle for the past couple of hours and uh, and just missed it. So if I've missed anything, if you want to uh, to give me any more information or have any ideas, again, email down below nearly at gmail.com. Otherwise, you can catch me on here Pretty much every single day, I'm not streaming on a set scheduled time. However, I will be streaming for about three hours each day from Sunday through to Friday. And I do have Friday night scrims uh, on Heroes of the Storm. And every Sunday, we'll come back for another brainstorming session and uh, and see how we go. Damn it, Tracky. <laughs> Damn it, Tracky. We will see how we go, guys. But until then, that is going to be me. Um, I'm working on just a just a quick heads up before I go as well. Um, I'm going to chuck it back to my webcam. Just a quick heads up before I go as well. I am currently working on uh, updating a number of things for the stream. You've probably seen the animations and whatnot going off on the side now. Um, I'm still working on an animation for... Uh, for donations. I have a very basic one at the moment, but I will work on a better one. Uh, I'm setting up a Facebook page as well, and I will be posting the notes for this onto Facebook each week um, as well. I am using my Twitter a lot more, so if you follow me already on Twitter, you'll be noticing that I'm uploading on posting a lot more often, and I will continue to do that. If you're not following me, make sure you do. Uh, also, YouTube will have a few new videos going out to it uh, over the course of uh, of time as well. Uh, by the way, by the way, what? I've seen him with a beard. <laughs> I, I I have the chin strap. See, see, you guys, we're rocking. We're rocking the chin strap now. We no longer have a beard. I know I kind of got to a stage where I had like the beard and the hair and everything. I was getting uh, I was getting very much uh, into the Twitch icon look, but uh, those days are over. I uh, I feel a lot better like this. Unfortunately, my hair is way too short. I wanted it a lot longer than this, but it'll grow out. It'll get there. The screen reflection on your glasses is green screened. Ah, it is too. I can't really do anything about that. Like, there you go. I can take my glasses off. So you can see me without glasses. Uh, without the reflection. But uh, I know you guys don't generally see me without my glasses. And I can't do this for long periods sitting at the computer anyway. Uh, if I don't really use the Facebook page, I've admined a couple pages. Maybe be able to help you out if you'd like that. Um, I definitely would. I don't have a Facebook page up at the moment. It is something that I'm setting up. You would notice up in this corner uh, throughout today has been a little pop-up now and then saying, uh, find me here. And it's got a Facebook thing. I don't have Facebook at the moment. That is something that I'm definitely working on. And I will endeavor to update and have things on there. Excuse me. Um, and again... All of these notes will be posted each week on here, um, as well as the Facebook page. Uh, Twitter announcements will be going out a lot more regularly. Uh, highlights will be going out onto YouTube as well, if you want to follow me there. And I will try to have these videos going out on a weekly basis to YouTube as well. Other than that, let's just have fun. Going to have a lot of fun. Going to have a lot to do over... Uh, the coming weeks, lots of research, uh, lots and lots of reading. So if you see me on a stream just reading, like, just deal with it. You gotta just deal with it. But that is me. That will be the end of us today. Thank you all very much for tuning in to day one of our new world creation bust out broadcast. We'll be back again every Sunday with the same broadcast, and I'll be back every day. Except Saturdays. 
with about three hours of broadcasting of random stuff. Hit me up with your ideas, your innovations, and whatever creativity you have rattling around in your brain. Please pick up a book. I must make just deal deal with it, mate. One, I, I, I will, I will, I will have a book at some. I, I don't even have a book. There are no books in this room. Sorry. I will pick up a book and I will read it on stream just for you, Tricky, at some stage. But we will see. Yes, Joey the Chicken. So happy. So happy right now. Thank you for letting us know that you also are happy. That's good to know. Thank you all for tuning in. That is it for me, Kaki Tay, for now. I will not be back tonight. I have a lot of research to do. I will be back tomorrow with a bit more Final Fantasy VIII, a little bit more Heroes of the Storm, and uh, I maybe a little bit of brainstorming throughout the week. We will see. But that is it for me. Thank you all for tuning in, Kaki Tay.